Hello everyone, Transport Enthusiast here, and in this Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 tutorial, what I am going to do is I am going to go to every single graphical setting in the game and explaining what it does and which ones are the most uh, CPU and GPU intensive and which ones make the least impact on your FPS. So this is basically going to outline what each setting does and how much of an impact on performance and FPS each setting will have. So, I did do a similar video uh, about like this a, a, few, a week ago or so. However, the sound quality wasn't great due to the music being too loud, and I've got I've gained new data, which uh, will highlight better what uh, what kind of impact you can expect each setting to have. And therefore, if you're running on a low end PC or a minimum requirements PC or a minimum spec PC, something like that, which settings you should be tuning down, which settings you can be leaving tuned up, etc., etc. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to go into our our settings. So we go into options, general, and then graphics. Okay. So first of all, I'm just going to quickly mention which settings are the most um, p uh, most intensive on your PC and therefore will have the biggest impact on your PC. So the most impactful. The most impactful setting that's going to drastically decrease your performance as you increase it is going to be terrain level of detail. So this is going to have an exp this compared to any other setting in game is going to have the most significant impact on performance. Uh, this one right here. Then after that, the other settings that will have a significant but uh, nonetheless much lesser impact than this will be terrain vector data, buildings, grass and bushes, object level of details, textures, uh, super sampling, texture synthesis, water waves, terrain shadows, and will include ambient and occlusion. All the other settings will have a little to uh, insignificant impact on performance, but I will go uh, to each setting more in depth. Now, VSync uh, doesn't really have too much of an impact on performance. The only thing about VSync is if you are running on two gigabytes of VRAM, like I am myself, it is recommended you keep VSync off. The other thing is, so then we have render scaling. Um, this is this is the this just scales the resolution of 3D scenes rendering right there. So there's no data here on this. So this is you can leave this on. If you're running on medium, just leave it to 100, something like that. Now, anti-aliasing. So, anti-aliasing, what this does basically is... Okay. So, what anti-aliasing does is, it is... It blurs and smooth... Uh, it kind of blurs out and smooths the edges of objects. So... So basically what it does is it kind of just smooths out the edges of objects. So, uh, say buildings, that kind of things, it makes the, uh, stuff look more smooth and more kind of less rough. So say if you turn this off, if you turn this off, what it will do is it might give you what can look like blemishes on objects, that kind of thing. So you have three different settings. You have TAA, this is the lowest setting. No, so you've got TAA, which is the highest setting. You've got DLAA and FXS, uh, FXAA. Now, they will ha now obviously the more you increase it, there's going to be uh, it's going to uh, require more uh, computing power. However, it's not going to have a huge impact on performance overall because this doesn't inf impact FPS significantly. So you can leave this up to the highest, even if you want to go on a low spec PC, as I am myself. And with this, basically, just means that you can smooth out the edges of buildings, and you're not going to have blemishes around. Now, the next one we have is terrain level of detail, and as mentioned previously, this is going to have a the most significant impact on performance. So the more you increase this, the lower FPS you can expect. And if you're running on, on a low spec PC, you want to make sure you run this low because this is going to have the most significant impact on performance right here. And what terrain level of detail does is. Um, I'm sure you can probably uh, already guess what it does, but it basically is just the visual quality of the terrain, the ground, the earth, and that kind of stuff. 
However, uh, even even if you turn this down, like this is really only imp uh, terrain level of detail. This is not noticeable when you're close up. So say if you're flying low to the ground, this won't be as noticeable. This is more noticeable when you're flying high up in the sky. So let's say you're at 2,000, 3,000 feet. You are going to notice that the lower you put the terrain level of detail, the less you're going to be able to see from a higher altitude. So this is o this only creates an impact when you are at a higher altitude. Close up, it's not too much of a difference. Uh, now, this is the thing. So, re realistically speaking, you can lower this down. It's not going to give you the. It's not going to completely destroy the overall experience. And it's definitely something you shouldn't be having up in the high sections if you're running on a low spec PC. So the main takeaway is if you're running on minimal requirements, low spec, or having performance issues, lowering this down is going to give you the maximum increase in FPS right here. So this is what we call our crucial setting here. Or what I will call our crucial setting here. The next thing we have here is terrain vector data. Now what this does is... It kind of it improves how the terrain uh, appears because if you turn it off, it makes stuff look more, um, le more, more like blocky, and it kind of just makes it look less real. So basically, the lower you go, the less realistic your terrain will look. The higher you go, the more realistic your terrain will look. However, uh, this is one of those things that will have a somewhat impact on performance. So this will impact your performance in some shape or form. So you, if you're running on low spec, medium, uh, or even medium spec PC, you want to keep it at medium because it does have a does have a some sort of impact on performance. Now the next one we have here are buildings. So obviously, what uh, buildings does is the higher you have this set at, the more the more detailed your buildings will be. Now, once again, this, much like your terrain level of detail, only becomes noticeable uh, uh, when you reach high, higher altitudes. So if you're low on the ground, the difference between low and ultra will not be as uh, noticeable as if you're at a higher altitude. However, one thing to bear in mind is that uh, this is one of the buildings, um, you can, I'm currently on a low spec PC. Well, not really low. Well, it's kind of a low spec PC. It's on the minimum requirements of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And if you have this on high, it runs fine. It doesn't impact performance too much. However, one thing to bear in mind is if you are in a very detailed city, one with many buildings, you may experience uh, some frame drops and some uh, lag. So this is one thing to bear in mind. This, uh, although not impactful over uh, hugely, does have somewhat of an impact, and particularly when you are flying over very detailed cities. And the other thing is, like uh, when you're high up in the sky as well, like you're not the the level of detail of buildings is not going to be too significant either. So this is something you can keep on lower or medium if you are having issues with performance. So as you can see, probably you, what you'll notice is that the most uh, most taxing settings on your PC will be the settings that actually are generating 3D objects. So uh, terrain detail, buildings, trees, etc. So next thing we have are trees. Now, trees do have a somewhat of an impact on performance. So the higher you put this up, the more FPS drop you will experience depending on your PC setup. The other thing to note is that if the, the further you increase this, the more trees will be loaded in. So obviously, uh, the more uh, it's going to use up your computer resources. So if you keep this to, let's say, low, it's going to load up less trees than if you put it up to medium. So not only does it affect the visual quality of trees, but it also affects how many trees are loaded in. And this is the, thing, the other thing is, graphically speaking, whilst uh, changing the trees, uh, from low towards uh, medium, high ultra will obviously uh, introduce incrementally uh, more realistic looking trees. However, at the same time, the difference isn't that noticeable. And if you're experiencing performance issues, this is definitely something you can turn down to medium or low if need be. Now, the next one we have are grass and bushes. And grass and bushes will impact performance as well. So, in fact, while they don't impact performance too badly or in a hugely significant manner, they will impact performance 
more uh, more so than other more so than other settings in the game. So for example, the grass and bushes will impact your performance or FPS more than the trees will, uh, trees will. Uh, but however, they will impact performance less than buildings. Now, basically grass and bushes, you can turn this off, low, medium or high. But turning this on off when you're on the ground is not going to look very realistic and it's not going to offer the most optimal playing experience. Then uh, as you turn it up from low to high, you will experience um, FPS drops as you do so. So grass again is one of those things that if you're experiencing performance issues you can keep to low or medium and realistically as well the other thing is about grass is it's only really noticeable when you're on the ground once you're high up in the area you're not going to be noticing the grass so if you're really experiencing severe issues turning off grass might be a other st uh, another step to do as well. Okay now the next thing we have is object level of detail. So object level of detail like with the terrain level of detail, it's going to impact performance not as much as terrain level of detail, nowhere near as much, but it is probably second or third most performance uh, impactful after terrain level of detail. Just uh, going to double check that there. You just bear with me one moment just to corroborate that. Yes, so. No, okay, so it's actually not too bad. It's down fifth or sixth, so it won't impact performance too badly but it will have a noticeable impact on performance so if we go down to object level of detail basically what we can take away from this is that the higher you set your object level of details obviously the greater the performance hit will be so if you were running on a So when you turn it to a lower setting, so when you turn it when you turn it down, what's going to happen is it's going to increase performance. And realistically speaking, um, this this is the other thing about to note about this is this is actually insignificant if you are right beside the object. The object level of detail is more important for when you are further away from the object. So this determines uh, how from uh, this determines how much of the object detail or how much of the object data is retained when you are flying away from it or flying towards it. So basically what this means is that when you're close by, even if you have this on low, you'll still be able to see the objects fine. This only become, this setting only kicks in or becomes relevant once you start to gain distance from the object. So basically determines at what distance the, the object is no longer as detailed or no longer as sharp looking basically. So this is one of those things that, you know, if you're not going to be doing low flying or if you're kind of doing airline flights, that sort of thing, you can safely lower this down to gain those extra frame rates per second because you're not going to be noticing too much if you have this at the lower end of things. But you know, I myself for minimum requirements, I have this set to 100 and it runs fine. Now, volumetric clouds. This is, now the volumetric clouds, again, will impact performance. This is one of those things that does have a rather uh, more noteworthy impact on performance compared to the other settings in game. So, for example, it's increasing this is going to have a rather, a rather noticeable effect on the performance of the game. So, the higher you go, the lower, uh, the more FPS impact, the more frame rates per second impact you will have. So, the lower the FPS will be, and this is one of those things that if running on a low spec PC, minimum requirements PC, or even having troubles with stuttering, lag, FPS drops, that sort of thing, you want to keep this in the low end because this does use up uh, about a lot of your PC resources. So you can keep this at low. Obviously, bringing this up to high is going to uh, offer much more realistic looking clouds, but it's one of those things that the clouds, even at low, are acceptable looking and they will offer you a... they will offer you a reasonable enough compensation in performance. So you can keep this low if you're having performance issues. Now, texture resolution is another thing. So texture resolution obviously has a significant impact on how well the basically all the objects in the game look because the lower your texture res resolution is, the worse the worse the whole world will look in general because all the textures will be of a lower quality. So it basically adjusts the resolution of the texture, and then you know. Obviously, the higher you go, the more realistic it will look, the more 
aesthetically pleasing will look, whereas the lower you go, the more unrealistic it will look and the more um, not so uh, the less of an enjoyable experience it will offer. However, one thing to bear in mind is that this text resolution here is can have a, ra a rather significant impact on your FPS. So if you were having issues, this is definitely one of those settings you need to keep down to medium or low. Uh, at medium, it, it offers a acceptable, uh, acceptable visual quality, but again, if you're running a low spec PC, this one really shouldn't be going past medium at the most. But if you're having serious issues, going uh, running this at low might be something to look at. But it definitely should be a last resort because this will significantly impact your overall gaming experience. So then again, the other thing we have within this texture resolution is all this here. So we have aniso uh, anisotropic filtering, texture super sampling, and texture synthesis. So anistorp so this here anistorpic filtering. What this does is is affects uh it affects or has an impact on the quality of the textures. So um it kind of impacts how yeah basically affects the quality of the textures. Now this is not too significant depending on which angle you're flying because this is only really noticeable if you are looking at things from an oblique angle. So in most scenarios this is not going to be too noticeable so you can kind of keep this on low for most situations. So this is one of those things you probably should turn down just to get those uh, extra frame rates per sec second. The next thing we have is texture super sampling. So texture super sampling is what it does is is renders in your world and images at a higher higher resolution than that of your base screen. So basically, the higher you have this, the much uh, much better your quality of the textures will look. So the much more visually appealing your uh, textures will look. Whereas the lower you have this the quality of the textures and the resolution is going to be much worse and much more much less enjoyable overall So one thing to bear in mind is that these two settings here, they kind of work in conjunction with each other. So the anisotropic filtering and the texture super sampling work in conjunction with each other. So for instance, what some of you may notice is that when you have both of these settings set to low, what will happen is that when you are flying, you may notice that some objects in the distance look more blemishy or look more blurred. Especially if you're landing on a runway, you may notice that the runway further up is kind of less detailed than the runway uh, where your aircraft is and actually I've noticed this myself because whenever I fly my, the runway always seems to have a cutoff point where it becomes blurry and the same goes for any of the terrain data it kind of seems to have this blurry point so basically what this means is that you want to have one of these set to a higher quality so if you set texture super sampling to 4x4 this is going to uh, eradicate to some extent this issue where you have blurring of the top of the runway or blowing at basically a certain part of the map that is further out from where your aircraft is currently located at. So you do, the key to this is you want to have prob probably texture super sampling set to 4x4 but again if you're running on a low spec PC or a minimum requirements PC you don't want to keep the you want to keep these low because these will have a FPS uh, they will impact FPS and as long as one of these is set higher than the other so say 2 times x and 4 times 4 the impact of performance should not be too significant uh, the basically you, you're getting you're maximizing the effect of these settings because you are getting you're getting rid of the blurring whilst you are also getting the maximum FPS drop so this is the sweet spot here the next thing we have are texture synthesis so texture uh, synthesis, what this does is basically kind of ensures that the textures uh, look proportionate and everything looks the size uh, in the size that it should be. So everything looks like it is in, within within proportion and does not look like it is out of place. So that's really all texture synthesis does. 
and it's 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 kind of a useful feature from making it uh, texture quality and the visual the visuals of your game, uh, you know, appear better or ma make the overall gaming experience better. The visual, especially the visual part. However, at the same time, it's one of those settings that isn't hugely noticeable uh, unless you're kind of really um, paying huge attention to the simulation experience altogether. So in if you're running on a low spec PC, minimum requirements of having any sort of FPS performance issues, this is definitely one of those settings you should probably lower down. So keeping this in medium or low is probably the best spec to go, just to maximize performance. Now, water waves, obviously, um, what, what it does is it, it changes or it impacts how the water appears, so how the waves of water appears. So obviously, the higher you have this, the more realistic it will look, and the lower you have this, the less realistic it will look. Now, uh, this is the thing again that this is the thing about this. It's it's not hugely essential. Like obviously, you know, for a full simulation experience or a f fully f uh, or a world that feels like it's truly alive, you, you probably would want to have this on the higher end of things. But if you're running a low spec minimum requirement PC, this isn't really one of those hugely noticeable things or. Uh, as significant visuals compared to others, so you definitely want to be keeping this on the lower or medium end, as this will give you an, an improvement in FPS. Now, obviously, the FPS improvement is not going to be huge for this. However, it will still be, it is, will still be worth toning down because you will still get some FPS increase or some performance increase or you know attainment if you keep this to the lower end of things. Shadow maps are fairly self-explanatory. What they do is they map out shadows in your game. Again, these are one of those things that it's this is uh, this is really only uh, very significant when you're on the ground in the air. You're not going to have shadows, obviously. So this is one of the things that you can probably keep to low. And it's it's just it gives it gives you the maximum performance, and it really doesn't have that huge of an impact on your overall gameplay experience. So it's definitely just one of those things you should keep to low to maximize your performance. Uh, terrain shadows are slightly different in the sense that it's basically just shadows from the terrain. Are basically, so it usually applies to mountains or it applies to, say, you're flying over a canyon or a cliff or that kind sort of thing. It will be the shadow formed by the natural landscape, basically. Now, one of the things to notice is that terrain shadows, like uh, terrain shadows, does have a, it, it will have basically significant impact on performance. So the higher you turn this up, you will uh, notice incrementally worse performance, depending on what kind of spec PC you're running. So if you're running on a low spec PC, uh, or minimum requirements, this is definitely something that should be set on the lowest preset because it has a huge impact. It has not a huge, but it has a more noticeable impact on performance than most settings. And it offers little in return, so it's definitely something you can keep it low. It's not hugely noticeable to be something that's worth the rather costly performance hit. Then we have contact shadows, and then this again is it's more like it's more uh, stuff related shadows. This is more about when you're in the plane itself, but again, it's not really necessary. So you, you probably should keep it low. It won't impact performance as much as terrain shadows, but again, it's it's not going to offer a hugely beneficial uh, impact to gameplay to be uh, worth setting this to a higher preset at the cost of performance. Windshield effects are what they do is basically they kind of uh, change how rain looks. The higher you set this, the better, uh, the more realistic rain will look on the windshield. So, so this is basically in relation to when you're flying in rain or you're flying in weather where there's precipitation or any sort of contact with water. So obviously the higher you set this, the more realistic it will be. But again, it's not really this. It's it's not really essential unless you really want a full simulation experience because unless you're flying in rain, this is definitely not something going to. Uh, experience but obviously it's going to look better the higher you set this to but i think it's one of those things that you can probably set to low either way because it's uh, i wouldn't put it on the highest of priority uh lists for the visual effects of the game the next thing we have are ambient occlusion 
So what ambient occlusion does is it basically calculates where shadows should be. Yeah, so basically what ambient occlusion is, it's a it's a setting that calculates how close shadows should be together and where lighting should be, that sort of thing. So the higher you set this, the more accurate your shadows will appear and the more accurate your lighting will appear. And this doesn't have a huge impact on performance, so you can feel free to turn this up to the higher presets if you so wish. The next thing we have are reflections. So reflections, what they do is obviously it's basically uh, applies to it's kind of like this really applies about it's more applicable in water because it kind of or water or rain it basically reflects your object or your buildings that's or the skyline etc etc so basically the higher you set the reflections to the less blurry your reflections will look and the more accurate they will look this is one of the things you have these to low or medium uh, they're not going to look uh, anywhere near as good as if you have them to a higher ultra however at the same time they're really not that essential to the overall gaming experience and they're definitely something that you should be probably keeping on low because they will have a somewhat impact on performance as would be expected so this is definitely something that should be keep, kept on low unless the reflections are really something that uh, is important to you Okay, then we have light shafts. So light shafts are basically... It's basically kind of... Uh, it's it's like... It basically it's creates, it creates difference between bright sources and lighting, that sort of thing. But again, to be honest, I'm, I myself, I'm, I'm not really sure what... what this offers if anything so this is definitely something you can keep at office it's not something that's ex essentially noticeable at all it's really one of those things that's it it's really one of those uh, great bonuses that you can use if you so wish but in this grand scheme of things it makes a negligible different negligible uh negligible difference in your ex overall experience so feel free to turn this off for low and that should offer you maximize your performance because one of the settings that you don't really need but at the same time this doesn't have a huge impact on performance whatsoever but you know considering it doesn't really offer much it's better uh, off just turning it off even if the performance imp uh, even if the increase in performance will be negligible at most now bloom what this does is it gives you sun glare, effect, uh, sun glare effects and kind of uh, sunshine that kind of stuff uh, this this is really one of the things you can do if you like. So if you if you like having the sun effect off the windshield, giving that kind of sun glare effect, then you can turn it on. This is obviously going to differ whether people like it or not. Now you can turn this on or off as you wish. It has very little impact on performance. So realistically speaking, e either setting is not going to make a huge difference. But you know, if you're having performance issues, feel free to turn it off because it's essentially it's more annoying rather than anything else. Then we have our depth of field. So the depth of field basically it simulates background blur, that kind of thing. And to be honest, this is one of those things that's kind of it's not really that, it's not really that helpful because I, I don't really like blurring stuff at all. So you can feel free to turn this down to low or even off because this will have a this does have not a huge impact on performance, but still has a, it does have some kind of impact on performance. So I'm going to turn this turn this down to low, but you can even turn this off. It's not really that useful at all. It's mainly just blowing backgrounds, that sort of stuff. Yeah, not essential. So if you want, you can turn this off or leave it up with the show setting you want. But do bear in mind that it does have a little but somewhat um, noticeable impact on performance. Then we also have lens correlation. Yeah, so th this uh, this is like it fixes distortions in the lens, basically that sort of thing. Here, this has a little again. It has a little impact on performance. Okay, so lens correction, what this does is it 
face and flex distortions in the lens. Now again, this one has a hugely significant impact on performance, but there will still be a s there will still somewhat be a little imp there will be little imp there will be a slight impact on performance if you turn this on. Lens flare. What this does is it basically adds flares to the sun and it adds those kind of uh, blemish dots or blemish dots you get when you reflect light. So this again for some people can find it annoying, some people may like it. it. Really depends what you prefer, but you can turn this on or off and this doesn't have a huge impact on performance. But again, if you're having issues it is probably advisable to turn it off. Then the two last settings we have are the ones that are more focused towards CPU and RAM. So using generic models for AI traffic and multiplayer. So if you are running on a CPU that is on the minimum requirements end of things, or if you're running on 8GB of RAM, which I know there's a lot of people who are asking if the system meets minimum requirements or can run the game more, this is definitely something you should have on because this will alleviate the alleviate the workload from your CPU and RAM so as the more aircrafts have to load in the more CPU usage that requires and the, RAM, the more RAM usage that requires so this is definitely something you should have on if you are running on a low-end CPU or on 8 gigabytes of RAM or if you're having any sort of performance issues that are CPU bound these two are definitely something to turn on okay so those are all the settings explained so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go this uh, list them from highest to lowest. I'm going to list which I'm going to list which settings have the most significant impact on performance, and which settings have the least. So, the setting which has the biggest impact on performance is terrain level of detail, and this has a much this has a twice as big, over two times as big of a performance impact as any other setting. After that, the next most impactful setting is terrain shadows. This is going to have a no one near as huge of an impact on performance as terrain level of detail, but still quite significant. Then followed closely behind after that is water waves. This again is going to impact FPS in a significant manner. Texture synthesis and texture super sampling in that order will also impact performance. After that, we have object level of details. Objects level of detail buildings, glass and bushes, ambient and pollution, volumetric clouds, text resolution, texture resolution and anisotropic filtering. So as we're going down, all of these have a incrementally less of an impact on performance but still a somewhat significant impact on performance. After that we have terrain vector data and trees, followed by shadow maps. Then after that we have depth of field, so depth of field that has is going into the little impact on performance, so depth of field doesn't have a huge impact on performance, followed by lens correlation. No, sorry. So after that, generic AI planes will have a not huge impact on performance, but still turning it on will leave a lot of pressure from your CPU. After that you have depth of field, lens correlation. Using generic plane models for multiplayer, anti aliasing, the windshield effects, then anti aliasing, sorry, then it's reflections, light shafts, and bloom. So basically, all the settings listed after, after windshield effects have little impact on performance, so therefore won't, won't offer hugely important. Performance impact. So therefore, what you can deduce from that is that the things that are um, the things that are most resource heavy are, are related to loading in of textures and 3D data. So 3D objects, terrain level of that, terrain level of detail, and anything to do with texture and resolution size will be the most impactful on PC. On your PC, then um, AI planes will have an impact on your CPU and RAM, and then the stuff that is least impactful on performance. Are all the stuff related to blooms, light shafts, lenses, basically anything that's not 3D objects, it's just kind of uh, visual effects. And that's really it. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like. 
for more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 videos and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and never miss out on the next video. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time.